And the foam cell represents kind of a fundamental core of the atherosclerotic plaque. So if you look at a plaque that is growing within the wall of the blood vessel, um, it's really the foam cells that are the main body of this. It's these big fatty macrophages. Now, when I say fat, you're immediately thinking, oh, okay, I need to eat less fat, but that's not, it's not that simple. What can happen is that the foam cell starts engulfing LDL lipoproteins. So it's engulfing the fatty lipoprotein. And that then is giving rise to this cell that when you look at it under a microscope, looks like it has little bubbles or it looks like it's foamy, but those are actually fatty bubbles. They're not air bubbles. You never have air bubbles in the body. But that is a nice opportunity to, once again, transition into the next topic, which is hyperglycemia and its impact on LDL modification. Now, it's very important um, to appreciate the fact that in its native or unaltered state, LDL is totally benign. Um, this was done well by, I think it was a group, Brown and Goldstein at UT Southwestern. They won the Nobel Prize, but it wasn't for this. But they have work showing that if you take macrophages and incubate them next to native or unmodified lipoproteins, LDL, they do nothing. They just exist in perfect harmony. If, however, that LDL has somehow been altered through peroxidation, like with um, polyunsaturated fats, which could do that very well, or th through glycation, uh, which is what we're getting to now, if you've altered um, the LDL, now it's considered problematic and the macrophage will engulf it. It will, it will eat it up. And the more it's eating up these modified LDLs, the more you're creating a foam cell, which becomes a very big, fatty, pro-inflammatory cell living in the wall of the blood vessel. And again, it's easier for the macrophage to get in there if you have had your glycocalyx eroded. You've lost that protective barrier. So under normal conditions, LDL is a perfectly benign transporter of fats and proteins. It's just moving them around the body both fats for energy and cholesterol um, for structure, which is very important. Speaking of the electron transport system that I described earlier, one of the most fundamental pieces of that electron transport system is a molecule called ubiquinone. Wouldn't you know it, ubiquinone actually has its origins as cholesterol. It uses the core structure of cholesterol to, to turn into ubiquinone. One of the most important, indeed an absolutely irreplaceable, unavoidable component of the electron transport system. And indeed, it's a component that we have less of when a person is on a drug that is demolishing their body's ability to make cholesterol. Um, so under normal conditions, LDL is just happily carrying fats. It's basically a little school bus dropping off chubby little kids, fatty little kids um, throughout the body, all with a distinct purpose. Now, the LDL can undergo glycation, um, and that can happen at this ApoB, um, one of the ApoB proteins on the lipoprotein. Remember, LDL is a lipoprotein. It has fats, uh, triglycerides, it has cholesterol, and it has proteins on it. It is, after all, called a lipoprotein. Glycation can, is when you have now glucose, back to the advanced glycation end products, binding to these proteins. Now, it can also bind the lipids, but now it makes it more prone. It's, it's been altered. Um, so it directly is compromised in its structure and function, making it not a great fit for its receptors where the liver would naturally be pulling it in and clearing it out. So it's making the LDL linger much, much longer in the blood vessel, the lipoproteins, but also it makes it more susceptible to peroxidation. And so you can see with hyperglycemia, you have a greater risk of oxidized LDL. Oxidation generally will refer to us burning the fat for energy. Um, so even though we, I just mentioned that it increases oxidized LDL, that really is more a reflection of the oxidative stress damage, which technically would more accurately be referred to as peroxidation, not oxidation, but peroxidation. But those terms are used um, pretty interchangeably. Um, I will try to just refer to it as peroxidation, but even still the actual tests that measure it are called oxidized LDL. That's what they say they're measuring. But anyway, just to say that all another way with these terms in mind, hyperglycemia 
and will result in glycation of the LDL, which increases its risk of peroxidation. And you can get that, you can directly measure the increased LDL peroxidation. That now is a very reactive, problematic LDL. And once again, back to the work of Brown and Goldstein, that makes a macrophage much more readily um, to identify that modified LDL as problematic and then want to eat it up. Because one of the jobs of the macrophage is to, phage means eat. It wants to engulf these problematic molecules and sort of protect the rest of the body.